Chemical Equilibrium, Part 5, Le Chatelier's Principle. Le Chatelier's Principle is used to qualitatively predict the effects of changes to a system at equilibrium. These changes include changes to concentration, pressure, volume, and temperature. Le Chatelier's Principle states that if a change is imposed on a system at equilibrium, the position of the equilibrium will shift in the direction that tends to re reduce the change. In short, this means that a system will shift in whichever direction cancels the effect of that change. The system shifts to relieve the stress. Here's an example involving a change in concentration. If the Haber process comes to equilibrium with this equilibrium pressure, what will happen if the nitrogen concentration is increased by 1.000 molar? To answer this question, let's consider how the equilibrium constant K compares to the reaction quotient that we get from the new concentrations. Using the equilibrium concentrations that are given, we see that K is equal to 0 0.0596. The reaction quotient with the increased nitrogen concentration has a value of 0 0.0170. Since Q is smaller than K, then the system must shift to the right to make more products to come back to equilibrium so that Q can be equal to K. So besides the ca calculations that support it, why does this happen? Well, adding nitrogen to the system causes more frequent molecular collisions, increasing the rate of the forward reaction. With more products being formed by the faster forward reaction, the reverse reaction rate can speed up as well. Once the rate of the forward and the reverse reactions are equal again, the new equilibrium is established. If a reaction species is added to an equilibrium system, the equilibrium position will shift in the direction that lowers the concentration of that species. If a component is removed, the opposite effect is observed. According to Le Chatelier's principle, the equilibrium shifts away from any added species and toward any removed species. Let's practice with this equilibrium reaction. In what direction will this reaction shift with the addition of carbon monoxide gas? Adding carbon monoxide, a product, causes the equilibrium to shift to the left, producing more reactants and less products at the new equilibrium position. What about the addition of solid carbon? Although carbon is a reactant, adding more carbon does not shift the equilibrium to the right. This is a heterogeneous equilibrium, so the pure solids do not appear in the equilibrium expression. Adding carbon, or even the arsenic oxide, would have no effect on the equilibrium because they would not affect the concentrations of the pure solids. What about the removal of arsenic vapor? How would that affect the equilibrium? Removing a product would cause, cause the equilibrium to shift to the right, producing more products. How does changing the pressure affect the equilibrium position? Well, changing the partial pressure of one gas in the equilibrium has the same effect as changing its concentration. The equilibrium shifts away from added gas and toward removed gas. Changing the total pressure of the system by adding or removing an inert gas, or one that isn't involved in the equilibrium, does not affect the equilibrium position because the partial pressures of each gas remains unchanged. How does changing the volume of a reaction vessel at equilibrium affect the equilibrium? Well, according to Boyle's law, decreasing the volume of the gas will increase the pressure of the gas. As a result, to maintain equilibrium, the system shifts towards whichever side of the balanced reaction has fewer total moles of gas. Likewise, increasing the volume of the gas will decrease the pressure of the gas. So the system will shift towards the side of the balanced equation that has more total moles of gas. Hopefully you've noticed that changing the volume, pressure, or concentration will affect the equilibrium position. 
Changing any or all of these properties of the system will not affect the value of the equilibrium constant, though. As we move on, we're going to look at how temperature affects equilibrium. And it's crucial to note at this point that equilibrium constants do change with temperature. Because K is only constant for a reaction at a specific temperature, K does have a temperature dependence. This dependence varies by reaction but it's easy to predict qualitatively by thinking of energy as a reactant or a product in the balanced equation. Endothermic reactions have energy as a reactant because energy in an endothermic reaction is consumed. When considering exothermic reactions, think of energy as one of the products of the reaction. If you consider which side of the reaction energy is on, then just apply Le Chatelier's principle as we've already done so. Adding energy by increasing temperature shifts the equilibrium away from the side with energy. Lowering the temperature shifts the equilibrium toward the side with energy. Let's consider the Haber process again. This reaction has a negative enthalpy change, which means it's an exothermic reaction. Energy is produced in this reaction. How would increasing the temperature of the Haber process affect the equilibrium? Adding energy would shift the equilibrium away from the product side, causing the equilibrium to shift to the left, favoring reactants. At this new temperature, the law of mass action tells us that the value of the equilibrium constant would be decreased. If this process were endothermic instead, how would raising the temperature affect the equilibrium? Well, if energy were a reactant, raising the temperature shifts the equilibrium to the right, favoring the products, causing the equilibrium constant K to increase. Before we conclude, let's apply Le Chatelier's principle to identify how each of these equilibria would be affected by these changes. How would decreasing the container volume for reaction 1 affect the equilibrium position? The lower volume would increase the total pressure, shifting the equilibrium toward the side with the fewest moles of gas, that is, towards the right side, which has no moles of gas. How would increasing the volume, affecting, how would increasing the volume affect the equilibrium for number two? Well, increasing volume decreases the pressure, so the reaction shifts towards the side with the most moles of gas that is, to the left side, which has two moles of gas compared to one mole of gas on the right side of the balanced equation. What about number three? Changing the volume of equilibrium number three will not affect the equilibrium because both sides of the reaction have the same number of gaseous moles. What about number four? Increasing the temperature of this endothermic equilibrium shifts the reaction away from the energy on the reactant side, shifting the equilibrium to the right. That gives us an increased equilibrium constant. How about number five? Lowering the temperature for this one would shift this exothermic reaction to the right as well, giving a higher value for K. Thank you for watching this video on Le Chatelier's Principle. Watch it again if you have trouble with this concept, or review the appropriate pages in your textbook. Leave a comment below if you have any questions. Thanks again.